Hello and welcome to this video. In today's video, what we're going to be discussing is the cell theory and the scientists that led to its creation. So we're going to be talking about a wide variety of scientists and then at the end we'll go ahead and wrap it up with the six components of the modern cell theory. So let's go ahead and get started. The first individual we're going to discuss is Robert Hooke. So Robert Hooke was an English scientist and he is well known for going ahead and developing the first compound microscope and being the first individual to look at cells. He went ahead and took a look at cork under his uh, compound microscope, and what he saw were these small, brick-like, rectangular chambers. Now, these chambers reminded him of what he knew that monks used to go ahead and live in back in the day, and though what those rooms were called were cells. So, he coined the term cell. So, Robert Hooke developed the first compound microscope and coined the term cell. The next one is Anton von Leeuwenhoek. So, he was a Dutch curtain maker who, in his spare time, liked to go ahead and ground optical lenses. What he did was he improved and perfected upon the microscope's design, allowing him to go ahead and see things in a higher magnification. And what he observed was he was the first to see living cells. So, Robert Hooke was the first to see dead cells, whereas Anton von Leeuwenhoek was the first to see living cells. And to do this, he went ahead and looked at blood cells and even bacteria from his own teeth scrapings. Pretty gnarly. Up next is Matthias Schleiden. He was a German botanist. And he was the first to observe that all plants were made up of cells. So we went ahead and looked at plants underneath a microscope. What he saw were these little rectangular structures. So these are plant cells. So plants, simply put, are made of plant cells. Vice versa, Theodore Schwann was a German zoologist and he observed that all animals were made up of cells. And as you can see, the structure of an animal cell is quite different from a plant cell. Plant cells had a very nice rectangular shape there, whereas animal cells are a little bit more round and they lack a cell wall, and the chloroplast, which goes ahead and makes the cell green. Rudolf Virchow, he was a German doctor. And what he observed was he was the first individual to go ahead and observe cells reproducing or making copies. He deduced that from this interaction, animal cells will always produce animal cells. So animal cells come from animals and plant cells will always go ahead and come from plants. So you won't go ahead and see a plant cell go through mitosis and have it result in an animal cell. That just doesn't quite make sense. So Rudolf Virchow was the first individual to observe living cells reproduce. The final individual we're going to talk about today is a gentleman by the name of Robert Brown. He was a Scottish botanist, and he was the first individual to go ahead and observe the nucleus. So the nucleus is the center part of the cell right here. And it's very important because what it's used for is going ahead and containing and holding the DNA of the cell. Now, these are only found in eukaryotic cells, not prokaryotic. So, Robert Brown was the first individual to go ahead and observe the nucleus. So, the combination of all these findings led to the creation of what we call the cell theory. So, the traditional cell theory, the old school version, has three components. So, there are three old school, or classic, and three modern. The three traditional parts are cells are the basic unit of life, all living things are made of one or more cells, and all cells come from pre-existing cells. So cells are the basic unit of life, all living things contain at least one or more cells, and all cells come from cells that already existed. Now, the modern cell theory adds three more components, which are cells obtain and use energy, cells have DNA, and cells are structurally and chemically similar to one another. So plant cells will be similar to plant cells and animal cells will be similar to animal cells. Now with that, I know this was just kind of a brief overview to get you introduced to the concepts, but that is gonna go ahead and close up our video today on the cell theory and the scientists that led to its creation. If you have any questions, please go ahead and feel free to contact your instructor and they will point you in the right direction. But until the next video, you all go ahead and take care.